three, two, one, go. Uh, yeah, welcome folks to the Flying Doctor channel. Today we are looking at what may well be the first in a series of how we might streamline our sim so that uh, loading and the general flow as we work through the simulator is eased because right now loading flight simulator is like watching paint dry. There we go, there we are, and we'll just await there. Should see something happening in a moment. What are we gonna get? Xbox Game Studios, you know the score. The uh, loading process is laborious, but it's not just that there are issues uh, around, you know, whether you really want these graphics. They're also to do with the practicalities of, for example, whether the software is loading in the first place or whether you've had a crash and you need to restart. There are ways of starting the sim later in effect. Uh, if you use a tool such as Add-ons Linker, which is a free tool, you can sort of bypass the early phases, but you've still got a lot of these sort of general scenes here. Now, we're gonna look today at a piece of software that's produced by Parallel42, and that piece of software is called Stripper. Now, I'm not quite sure what I'm inviting into my flight sim space. I'm going to give it a try. So we're going to have to have a look at Stripper because it's purporting to offer us uh, some advantages and some streamlining to get rid of all the junk, perhaps, or to make the loading screens a little bit more interesting and more relevant to where we're flying. And we're going to trial that. So welcome to the Flying Doctor channel. Let's geek into it. So folks, whilst we're loading in the background, uh, yes, we can see right up the top here, Parallel42.com. The utilities are what are interesting me at the moment, and uh, one of them is called Stripper. The other ones are called Flow, Flowplo and Flow Essentials. Uh, there's also the Sky Park, which adds a sense of real realism to Flight Simulator. It allows you to plan missions for which you can gain payment and it kind of adds to the realism, you know, what would a real trip look like from this airport? Would you be carrying freight? Would you be carrying people? Um, so yes, and then Chase Plane, which is an advanced camera system for Pair 3D version 2, 3, 4, and 5, and Microsoft Flight Simulator X. So it's not the same as Flight Simulator 2020 or X Plane. You can probably get a better understanding of what uh, Parallel 42 are offering if you look at for example the flow products where they've taken the highly annoying selection bar that's at the top of Microsoft Flight Simulator with that little white uh, marker where you put your mouse on it it gets in the way it's a real pain unwieldy difficult particularly if you're making recordings you can get free software to remove that um, from the screen altogether until you roll your mouse over you know um, but uh, flow here is this the first in the that's a free kind of addition that improves workflow by bringing all of the Microsoft Flight Simulator bar tools round into a dial and they've grown this uh, product into Flow Essentials uh, as you can see here and also Flow Pro. So um, as a company as well as producing aircraft uh, for example and uh, scenes they are really um, kind of cut their teeth I think on producing products that are allowing our experience of flight simulator to become more streamlined a bit of a nudge i think to microsoft flight simulator and it's as if to say you know why not try and do things this way okay my flight sim simulator now is uh, loaded but there are one or two things that kind of annoy me um one is simply that there isn't a percentage figure for how far the program has loaded and sometimes it unless you've got a microscope you can't actually see on that um, loading bar that appears on the bottom you can't see where you are in the loading process or more crucially have you got a problem has the process stalled and do you need to start the sim again start rooting around in your add-on scenery to see if something is causing a problem and then beyond that there's the kind of the updates aren't optional 
when you're loading Microsoft uh, Flight Simulation. You might not have more space for the latest and greatest updates. And one of the great things about the Flight Simulator package, of course, is how they are um, focused on a development plan and constant updates. But what if you've not got space for that or you don't want it at that time because you can stumble on an update and you suddenly find that it's going to take you a lot longer. And yes, so the app that we're going to be looking at is called Stripper and uh, it's a loading screen replacement utility. Uh, are you tired of staring at dull static images while waiting for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 to load? Time to sit back and enjoy the show. Uh, eliminate loading screen anxiety. Hmm, is that a condition? Loading screen anxiety. I'm not sure if it's a condition. It's, it is annoying though. And welcome a more pleasant visual experience with Stripper, an innovative application designed to transform your loading screen. Built to cater for all users. And uh, yes, uh, one of the early users had to say, I've been loving it. So we'll see if we love it as well. Highlights. Let's see if any of that relates, any of this relates to us. Say, say goodbye to the frustration of wondering if Microsoft Flight Simulator is locked up. Yep, that's uh, definitely true. Cinematic zoom is an option you can enable in settings. Well, I don't know what that is. We'll have a look at that. Discover your world. Immerse yourself in the beauty of satellite imagery as Stripper unveils stunning visuals on your loading screen. Okay, well, we're going to still have the loading screen. You can't really change the loading times, but maybe we might have something more interesting. Look, choose your views. Influence the airports. You'll see by selecting airports. We're unlike that. More accurate loading percentages. Yes, there we are. On the other hand, I didn't... Um, uh, what? Um, the whole number approach to the default loading screen. Do I see a whole number? I don't see a whole number on my default loading screen. I see a percentage loading when I'm... When I'm um, when I bought a project, a product and it's installing, downloading and installing, but I'm not sure. Um, but rather than 56%, you get 56.032%. Well, I'm doesn't partic well, I guess it would tell you if you've got a very, very slow downline. So I'm interested to see what that looks like. Brief, sim, this brief, sim brief integration, that really interests me for those who utilize sim brief for flight planning. So if, I, if I'm planning a sim brief journey, is it reflected then? in the next screens I see as the flights loaded and view airport history. Um, uh, oh yeah, it's an interesting one. Mr. Nice CAO, hold down the tab key while loading in. The stripper will display a list of previously displayed airports. Okay, I'll have, I'll, I'll have a look at that. But one of the issues I do have is that when you're loading flight simulator, somehow you can, you can forget the ICA code for the previous airport you put in. And that is a bit annoying. You still have to search for it. So bonus tools, skip intros. Well, I mean, you can get free programs to skip the intros, but nonetheless, that's that's great. Remove a Sobo black shirt. Suppress undesirable pop-ups. Skips or reduces the intrusiveness or the following pop-ups. Confirmation message to menu, graphics card driver, uh, applying settings. L reduces network disconnect, low band pop-ups and more. Okay, well, I'm not really struggling with any of those. And this one's interesting. Allow delayed package updates. We were talking about this before. Does not skip core sim updates. Adds continue button to installation manager. Nothing is worse than being prompted to download a massive update when you just wanted to enjoy a quick flight. Don't worry. It'll ask you again the next time you launch the sim. I like that idea, but I have to, I have to kind of confess, I don't really quick fly anywhere, but uh, it's still a bit of annoying. So we'll have a look at this. We will make a purchase at £12. Uh, for the sake of the channel, and we shall see what differences uh, we find. Oh, I paid £14.40 for this, uh, direct from Parallel42.com. We'll look at the download process for you, see how that works. It's come up as a zip file. It says uh, strip configurator.zip. Now I've extracted that, no real problems there. Okay, entered uh, the uh, uh, folder. It's come up with a nice little icon. I'll right click on that, run as administrator, see what happens. OK, so it comes up with what looks to be like a really nice installer um, with both information that was clear to me before I've made the purchase about the MS store version that I need to have. And also it allows me to detect and install the path to the simulator. So uh, let's just try and uh, do that. So detect and install. It says launch Microsoft Flight Simulator to install. It's in the background. I'll stop it and I'll start it again. Okay, as requested. Here we are, seen it straight away. Excellent. And uh, about this install, stripper installs directly inside the core packages of the sim, so it's not a community folder add-on. 
and it will restore the default loading screens and will require that you reinstall from here. Sim updates will restore the default loading screens. So we have to reinstall if we get more sim updates. But that's all right, it's launching the game. And no immediate changes here as the Asobo Studio logo comes up. Um, but I can see I've obviously got this interface page. What I can tell you straight away is that I can't resize that, uh, but it's perfectly readable to me. I may well try and zoom in for you so you can see what's happening. It's so What's on offer looks pretty good. So there's an uh, initial interface here, enables cinematic zoom, animates the satellite imagery slightly and adds a fading animation between airports. And then we've got information about sim launch overlays. Oh, and I can see immediately here as it's, so it's, I've downloaded it, it said start the simulator, get it going. I see immediately here it's got this stripper logo that's over the top with parallel 42's um, information on it. So I can see straight away and it's inviting me to use, hold the tab key to see airport history. Let's do that. Do we see anything? History? Okay. Well, I think this is a, I've never been to this airport, so I think that this is a standard airport that's in. But we'll have a look and see uh, what's possible. I'm just going back here to have a look at uh, the uh, interface itself. But already I've been nicely distracted because um, I'm seeing sort of through each phase of the loading screen, I'm seeing something different. And uh, they're clearly around uh, the United States, but I'm seeing different uh, airports, airstrips appear. And uh, the quality of the imagery is uh, really, really good. I must admit that this is sort of making the loading experience a little bit more pleasurable already. And I've just up large, as up, I've just <laughs> up <-larged. laughs> uh, I've just uh, upsized the interface for you so you can see it. So I can enable cinematic zoom, so that animates the satellite imagery. I'm not sure whether that happened or whether it would happen on next load. Uh, sim launch overlays. Um, I guess we'll see that loading progress would be good. So we'll click that there. But we can have airport ICA name, airport location, loading progress. Uh, flight loading overlays. And I think we'll have loading progress with that as well. And we can skip the Microsoft Flight Simulator intro. So we'll click on that. And I guess that will happen, as I say, the next time off. Suppress undesirable pop-ups. Allow delayed package updates yes there seems to be a lot of feature here and then if we go into the airports what do we get here so this is uh 21,000 airports it's reporting so it's reading these in the sim but i guess you could focus in small medium on large depending on what you were loading so i know that i'm going to go for large airports the next time i load my sim brief because of i'm flying the a320 and uh, we can have any countries but uh, we can toggle all those off and we can just focus on perhaps uh, United uh, Kingdom and uh, let me just have a look yeah okay so I guess if I come down here and focus on uh, United Switzerland and uh, two little results match your filters United Kingdom there we are and uh, it'll pick up airports from one or two and I say that because um, it's Switzerland um, that um, I'm looking to fly into I think so and uh, I might fly f from airports within Switzerland or from the UK to Switzerland uh, so that's interesting to see what the sim will do there it's got a sim brief tag as well I can put my I pilot ID in there there we go and uh, we'll just see what happened what will happen there I guess I can check it with my sim brief account yeah is that coming up yes it is a uh, sim brief account comes up so I could just check I've got the right name. Uh, there you go. View your routes. Uh, stripper, stripper will automatically pull your sim brief data and slow it when loading in your flight. Still taking a while uh, to load here. Installation. All that's done. Uh, there we are. So we've got this um, uh, pop up here. We'll keep that open. I'll just move it away to a foreign page for you and uh, see what happens here. And what, whether we get a difference if I sort of load. Um, a flight in so Airbus A320 um, I, I mean to give it's due if this doesn't work immediately I'll just restart the sim and then see where we're at because there's lots of other features that we haven't seen yet um, but if I go to Salzburg
yeah, Salzburg, which is, uh, and if I, I'm in the A320, and if I put myself on the uh, runway here, and I'm interested in what happens as the, uh, as the plane loads. So we'll click on that, set a departure, and press fly, and see what difference we get there then. So there we are, standard pause. We get, oh, there we are, this is interesting. So I've got the aircraft coming up, it's really refreshing. I've got the, um, uh, the weather's here, and also this really interesting, loading, helpful loading bar. Yeah, and it's to three decimal places as well. And it's not moving. <laughs> In You know, we, we know that the sim pauses, don't we? So, um, yeah, but uh, it doesn't really, therefore, add that much assurance. Um, because you're thinking, is it that you're not seeing the bar move? Oh, we aren't, it's going up there. So, uh, no, it, it does... Yeah, it does prevent me from looking at the bar. It will show changes on the bar that are very slow. Um, but uh, uh, yes, it's um, it's still pausing, but you get you would still see it freeze up the top here. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, and uh, it's highlighted Salzburg Airport. There's the animation. There it has got a little bit of animation, a little bit of movement, and uh, details not great oh zooming in now yes and i've got a clear indication of where i will be actually that's helpful i don't know if you can see that but in the middle here there's a blue a little blue marker indicating where i am and this is saying that i'm ready to uh, fly so we'll just let this load this and see if there's any sizable difference to um to the quality i'm not seeing anything here and uh We'll uh, move uh, right in, ready to fly, and that's what I'll be expecting to see. I'll just give it a couple of seconds to, because things can be a little bit choppy in the Phoenix to start off with, depending on where you are, as we load in. Um, it's a little bit claggy, but that's not to do, I don't think that's to do with the software itself. So let's not worry, let's go back again and have a look at the loading process. It's interesting, this is on close down here. If I hold the tab key, what I'll see with airport history now. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I'm quitting to desktop. Didn't give me time to have a look, but there seem to be a lot more airports that you've managed to load in. There, so we're back to desktop now. And then we'll restart the sim and see where things have progressed. So there we are, clicking on there. Off we go. Launching game. What do we manage to avoid? This is real time here. Okay. And uh, the paint is being applied. And it's drying. It's taken a while. Okay, so have we skipped anything on the way in? Big black screen. It's uh, definitely missed something there. Okay, we've got the uh, copyright information. What are we going to lose? Do Tay, tell me. And is it any quicker? Okay, it's moved on to a splash screen. It's checking for updates. All right, all right. Would it give me the option to skip them, which was what was promised? I hadn't planned this. Okay, we've not seen the splash screens, um, the Xbox or the Black Bush. We're straight into uh, a loading screen. A percentage is moving along the top here. There we are, up here. Now that is reassuring because... I could just about make that out on the bottom, but it's really clear that we are loading on the top. It's, uh, we put in two airports, and we put in um, U two countries for airports, the UK, and we put in Switzerland. So we're loading our airports in now. There's Boscombe Down. It's a uh, government research facility. And... Uh, Earthstar Geographics and the GIS user company. 55 seconds. Zurich's come up. So yes, if I if I were programming that little screen to start off with, and I were flying, you know, new routes between perhaps two countries, uh, this certainly is 
is kind of lifting my experience a little bit. I'm interested, I'm engaged much more. As I said before, the detail looks great. Uh, there's Gatwick. So obviously these are um, overhead imageries. These are, you know, they, they um, they're true to life. And I can see in relation to the scenery that I've got, I can see features that I'm familiar with at Gatwick, particularly here, this middle part, um, the hub at the middle there. I'm aware about that. I've flown from there before. So, and the um, the screens are moving about fairly quickly. Fairford, I'm seeing the delay 60.404, and we're on that at the moment, and we're holding that. So, in a sense, I do know. Yes, there's no point looking any further at the bar. It has kind of frozen for it. Then quickly 405. So yeah, we have got a thousandth of a percent. <laughs> It has told us that it's loaded an extra thousandth of a percent. I don't know. But it's um, certainly, yeah, there we are. And uh, things have moved. We can see that effect definitely working there. It's a bit more obvious, the cinematic effect. It's only a very slight movement. So sort of a zoom and pan uh, effect. Geneva. Yeah, so, it's, uh, so we are getting some variety here. And uh, we are resting assured that uh, we are getting things loaded. Why has it got ac oh, Akrotiri? Oh, it is the United Kingdom. Yeah, that's me. That's me giving them a lesson. Um, because it's uh, English dependent, British dependent, British uh, overseas territory. Akrotiri Air Base. Is that right? Is it a, Where is that? Where is that? That's got me thinking already. The fact that I'm asking where is that is interesting. And uh, Manchester. Yes. Yeah, so you are you are getting a real sort of feel for the countries that you're travelling to and from. This would sort of stir one or two ideas. Perhaps airports that I'd thought of, I'd have forgotten about. Um, it would be nice if it picked up and gave some information, I think, on whether you had additional community scenery and uh, where your scenery was coming from. Because that's sometimes that you, you sometimes have your additional community scenery and you can't remember. Um, so if it were able to, I know, I mean, this is really good and sort of uh, encouraging me. But if, for example, it said EGL or Heathrow and it said sort of, for example, you had a package that was uh, in your community folder, if it gave that information of... Um, the package in the community folder and who'd produced it and um, that would be helpful i'm not sure what file it would have to read for that um, but uh, yeah milden hall so much more variety it hasn't sort of slowed the loading experience but it is regularly giving me a kind of change of image that it, it's uh, sort of meaning that i'm just not looking at the same screen so yes presswick and uh, yeah, it's a kind of reminder of airports that you might want to visit. I'm reminded about Presswick because of its uh, location. Um, it's uh, near Space Centre, effectively the Space Centre for the UK around there because of the unique weather conditions that uh, the Presswick kind of base, its situation offers. So yeah, still, oh, what happens if I press tab? Let's try that again. There we are. So this is a history of, oh, it's a history of airports shown. And I'm having to keep pressing it for them to come up. There we are. Still interesting, helpful, different. Um, and I can see that it's still a bit to load. Got some reassurance there. So we are, and we've got a sort of a big delay there. Uh, the other thing I need to test is the sim brief. So just as I go across, I'm going to make sure that my, whilst I'm talking to you, I'm going to load a previous flight in from sim brief. And uh, we'll see what um, what happens there. And uh, so, uh, where my safe type? Do do what? Do excuse me, because you can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, I'll switch over so you can see what's going on. So I've got my sim brief account up here, and uh, there's lots of uh, um, lots of uh, different flights. But there was, for example, a flight from Gatwick to Luton. Uh, which we can load here. So this is now active. It will tell me that um, use the suggested route. So we'll update it. 
so you can see here this is just simply my flight so I'm interested to see what it does with this now I need to go to generate flight do forgive me this is not supposed to be a lesson in flight but this is how it would work in reality and uh, that would give me a flight plan close that and uh, go back and just see what we get on loading here got a nice big blank screen okay and we've got um, you've got the livery showing uh, and we've got the air condition showing and we've got the loading bar so we're kind of where we were before and uh, just interested as it loads whether we see anything else and uh, what it means by sim brief uh, integration whether it affects the initial loading of the sim if you're with me it was really good to see those airports coming from Switzerland and the UK as the sim loaded cold I'm wondering if it picks up sim brief and allows that to influence that initial loading screen my guess is not there we are we do have a delay here 73.358 percent <laughs> um, but uh, yeah that is not moving and then we can see well it's interesting the image moved there but the loading screen hasn't and we've got our little indicator here uh, you might not be able to see it in blue of where we are that is actually really helpful um, you input that obviously if you're starting from a kind of gate you would input that anyway in your departure and I'm still just trying to discern whether this is uh, working so I've got my pilot ID for sim brief here and what should happen is that it should recognize a, uh, a mission that's been set up in sim brief uh, a, a a flight plan that's been generated and then when I load that in at some point I should see on the loading screen details of my journey appearing just looking at the website here read seamless sim brief integration for those who utilize sim brief for flight planning stripper offers integration that displays your route as you load into the starting airport I've struggled to get this working yet but we'll have another go okay I'm going to escape out of this and I'm going to go to main menu so we start from scratch and then I go to the world map and then resettle in Luton now what should happen here because we've got our sim brief that is live if I put in uh, Luton there we go what should happen is as Luton is loaded in uh, we'll put ourselves at the corner here it's one of my favorite spots uh, let me set this as departure and fly now we should see a flight plan let's have a look and see what we find are we going to get that so there's no flight plan at the moment as far as I can see just this um, splash screen and uh, I'm just wondering what will follow there's usually a bit of a delay here of course as the scenery loads in um, but I'm not seeing a flight plan I'm not seeing a justification for uh, the sim brief software being used so yeah just check in here we are live got a completely new flight plan we've got uh, Luton here an overhead picture of Luton and we can see but nothing nothing to say where the sim brief is working so I might be missing something here what happens if I load the sim brief plan manually we're getting a bit techy here. If we if we load the sim brief plan manually into the flight plan, does it then show um, when we move from uh, uh, the flight plan page and we click on you know fly once we're at our destination? Does it then show in the screen? So let's have a look at that. May as well give the software all the opportunity. So here we go. We're going to save this as a flight plan. I click on flight plan download here find out what I'm uh, looking for SF 2020 so we download the PLN file put it somewhere that's uh, nice and uh, safe so we'll save that there we go it's actually going onto my desktop nothing too unusual there not terribly worried about that so we save that and we'll try and load that back in sim we'll see if that makes a difference okay then uh, if we click on more I think we should be able to load save there load from this PC it will find it from the desktop which is where our PLN file is um, there we go let's try there there's the plan okay open up that give it some time okay so yeah this is what I'm talking about if you've not seen it before 
and loaded a flight plan in that m that you've uh, created on Simbrief before. So there we are starting at Luton there. And you get a map of uh, where you're heading. Now, I was thinking that this would automatically come from Simbrief, but we've loaded it in. Let's see if any of this appears on the splash screen as we start the flight. That's a dark screen to work out with. And again, no real change there. Ah, we do have a route here. So, yes, the sim route has come in. But uh, and we've got the route up there. It's not really the kind of I'd be hoping for. I don't know whether what more detail I could hope with. It doesn't really tell me very much. Let's see. I wonder if it adds anything on as we progress forward. All right. Let's wait. Okay. No is the answer to that. So I've had a little bit of time to play about and think more. I've done quite a lot within this review itself. I thought it might be helpful just to comment on each of these and to say how far, to what extent are the highlights that are suggested by Parallel 42, to what extent do they, do they kind of, uh, are they kind of reality? So if you, firstly, reduce loading screen anxiety. Yeah, there is an anxiety around the loading screen. Um, it's saying there's smooth and uninterrupted loading experience. Well, not quite. It's interesting you can get a percentage figure of your loading. That is helpful. And I did find that having it measured to three decimal places, um, I did think we, we saw, didn't we, well, uh, to move a, a thousandth of a percent. It, we got this increase increment of a thousandth of a percent. I don't know how it's worked out. Um, it did give a bit more reassurance, and it would stop me, I think, uh, stopping the sim running and restarting it earlier than I actually need to because I, I think it would do that job uh, ensuring you stay engaged and excited about your upcoming flight so yes it does reduce some anxiety degree but it still stops and it'll just stop with um, three decimal places showing when the sim pauses and it loads so yeah partly there cinematic zoom as an option that you can enable in settings um, I felt that the cinematic zoom was there. I don't know if you could see it, but I could definitely see it when it sort of gave me some uh, airfields to look at as the um, soft, as, as the flight was loading. Um, but it wasn't as dramatic as you might think. The, the movement perhaps needed to be more to keep me engaged and also perhaps needed to zoom in as well slowly rather than uh, just as zoom it just kind of getting this translation so uh, a little bit underwhelming for cinematic zoom uh, it says discover the world immerse yourself in the beauty of satellite imagery i think this is sort of one of the really strong points that potentially could genuinely keep you interested as you're loading the sim stripper unveils stunning visuals on your loading screen yeah, and I think that, that it is that this will lift your kind of the mundane sort of loading sort of feeling. Uh, more accurate loading percentages. We've talked about that before. Um, the whole number approach default loading screen all too often leaves you wondering whether or not something's happening. Well, actually, as I mentioned before, I don't actually get a whole number approach to the to the default loading screen. I don't get a percentage. I do get a percentage when I'm, say, downloading an update. Um but yes, displays progress in the thousands. Uh, but basically all that means is that when you get a kind of delay in the loading, uh, it will still freeze at um, three decimal points. Here's the thing that I'm kind of thinking is not working here. And I have to say I may well have uh, overlooked how some, some key feature in this uh, I've not sort of enacted or something. Seamless sim brief in integration. This is not seamless. Um, I've used other apps before when I put my SimBrief Pilot ID in and uh, the apps, uh, for example, you do it to access the uh, electronic control unit in uh, the tablet in Phoenix and uh, you do it in Navigraph as well, don't you? And it, it, but usually it is seamless, but it's not seamless with this software. I hadn't found that I'd got SimBrief integration. I had to do it manually. Well, and you kind of think, well, what's the point of that if I'm doing it manually on the flight planning page by saving my SimBrief flight plan and then loading it again? Um, it, and even when I did that, I have to say that I feel that the SimBrief integration is a little bit underwhelming uh, because when you in practice when you're flying, here's an example that's uh, been given here. Um, what is, I mean, this is so this is so kind of rudimentary. It doesn't really sort of tell me anything. Um, whereas some of the key information that I would like to see are what are these waypoints called. And an added bonus to this were, would be if you had your approach uh, 
um, written down uh, for landing, for example, and just your your, de- your standard inf- uh, you know information departure. Um, this kind of magenta line doesn't really do very much apart from remind me that I'm traveling somewhere somewhere else um, <laughs> um, I guess yeah, occasionally I have jumped in the sim thing at the wrong airport I, it could rescue you from that um, but that's my first um, kind of sort of big sort of it's just not worked for me and I have to say it may well be it's something that I've uh, done so we'll just uh, shut that down and go back uh, up again. Uh, view airport history. Miss an ICAO. Hold down the tab key while loading in. St- and st- strip up will display a list of previously displayed airports. Well, interesting, yeah, but not doesn't really add anything once again. And also the annoying thing is that you have to keep holding down the tab. Or if you press the tab and let go, it will disappear after a while. And, and, and it, the timing doesn't seem right of that. You don't get a really good look. Bonus tools. Uh, further stripping down the sim, delivering some great bonus features. Skip MSFS intros. I've seen that, yeah, but you can do that for free. As I say, if you download something like Add-ons Linker, you can jump the first part and you can you can uh, shortcut the and remove the interest the intros. Suppress pop-ups. Occasionally, I see pop-ups, but not that much to worry me. An update later. I've not really seen that in practice. So a kind of yes, it does this, um, but some some kind of aspects of this leave me slightly disappointed. Have to say, um, the other uh, addition would that would be really good is in practice when you're flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you may well have loads of additional airports. For example, free airports that are in your community folder as well as paid airports. And one of the things is that um, those things can get lost, like just sitting away in the back of a cabinet somewhere. And, and it, it's really good to be reminded that they're there. And I see potential in this software because if you're going to show, say, the airports that are available in a particular country um, and it's able to show you airports that are in your community folder and then even perhaps if it's able to read the community folder, um, or it's able to read uh, the um, main folder in uh, the Asobo folder uh, in uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator where the marketplace uh, add-ons go. So, for example, it would be great to see KLS, McCarran International, Las Vegas, Nevada, United States. And if you had a switch to, to say, you know, it would show you what is in your Microsoft Flight Simulator package and it would say under there um, whether that's Asobo or whether you could, for example, also say, you know, whether it was an add-on and, and who'd created the, the add-on. And uh, that would be a really, really good addition. Uh, because, as I say, the thing that, that happens is you lose track of the number of add-ons. You lose track of the interesting airports you might want to land at. And you find yourself rooting around, you know, to see what's there in the first place, going back to your, you know, add-ons uh, manager if, if you use one. So that is, a, that is something that I think could really... Uh, prove uh, effective and helpful. So now on to the really big question. Uh, would I recommend this? Would I buy it? Well, I've already bought it. <laughs> for, so you don't have to. 2640 Australian dollars, around about £14 if you were to get it off the Orbix site. Well, the first thing I'd say is that this does fit within Parallel 42 sort of pricing structure. This is not a game changer. Um, at twelve at twelve pounds plus sort of VAT um, on the site here, um, bring you up to yeah the fourteen. Uh, whereas something like the Sky Park, which I does have, do, do have the, the, at twenty five pounds, that you're, you're buying an application here that will change the way that you explore the simulator. If you don't know about Sky Park, I may well do a separate review, but you can see here you've got contracts. So you're setting up flights for specific purposes. They're sort of randomized. You have some control uh, over it. And there's a a lot of um, kind of um, play within this. I use play, of course, or gameplay in the best possible uh, best possible um, sort of way and lots of options. So something uh, like um, the Skypad 
is is a game changer. It changes the way you approach the game, uh, the change the way that you involve the game. It has various uh, uh, incentives, and it is yeah double the price. I can't really speak about Flow Pro. It looks very interesting, and it it looks like it can do far more. I'm really interested to see these uh, little kind of. Um, menu sort of windows popping up. They seem to be putting a lot of options in very closely um, together for me in a way that's uh, manageable. Um, and I would like to look at this. Do subscribe um, because uh, once I start to get more subscribers, start to get a bit more income from the site, um, then we can explore that. But no, the question is: so is this you know is this worth your investment? Um, Although it fits in the pricing structure, I'm I'm not sure. Um, you know, I just have a cup of tea and do something else when the screen's loading. Um, I think with a little bit more functionality in it, it could be uh, a serious contender uh, for many folks. But also, it's just worth worth sort of thinking for this kind of for fourteen pounds, uh, roughly. Um, you, you know, what what other things could you purchase and, and how does that stack up well for 13 pounds uh, plus additional taxes uh, you could purchase fox 2 base which is an aircraft in its own right and see i'm you know i'd be quite interested in in that and that might give you a little bit more kind of joy depending what you're looking at so you're looking at paying about the same amount for an aircraft a aircraft and this is a far cheaper aircraft of course um compared to you know, for, for 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 what you'll get for those changes, you're paying about the same amount for an aircraft. Mm, I'm not quite sure. If the project was product was a little bit more mature, I might be I might be interested in that. And um, and if, if there are updates coming, that would be absolutely fantastic. Free updates to just tweak tweak things a little bit more and, and to add some of those features. I think that would be really good. But you could get another aircraft for sort of thirteen quid, and that's just off uh, Parallel Forty Twos. Uh, site. Looking at the sceneries, actually, I think one of the places where Parallel42.com is excelling is in the sort of sceneries that are giving you very sort of isolated but very focused pieces of scenery work for around about five pounds here. So, for example, seven pounds, you, you know, you could get a couple of these and and have a cup of tea whilst your load screen <laughs> kind of uh, goes through the motions. But uh, forty uh, high voltage here. A farm strip, a detailed farm strip that you might be able to fly around and uh, explore from, and and also um, featured within this, you know, things that are going to challenge you in your flying. Uh, Eight hundred and seventy-two foot grass runway, a helipad. That's interesting for me um, because, as you know, that I'm quite keen on helicopters within the sin. Uh, power lines around, so a challenging place to fly, and it seems to, seemingly with um, quite a lot of scenery detailing that's pretty unique. I've not seen this before, and that's going for just seven pounds. Interesting. I'm really, I'm actually quite interested um, by this. Let's have a look at Cedar Mountain, and uh, yeah, you can see similar, um, similar there. So these these kind of uh, little additions would work if you've got sort of seven pound free. You know, and you're wanting to explore something for sort of t a couple of hours over a weekend or something. You know, there's a lot here. And I'm sort of saying that that 15, 14 pounds by the time I've dealt with it, my and in Great Britain here, um, it seems to be on the more expensive side. In terms of what Orbix is offering, it sits pretty well within their pricing structure as well. Uh, so, for example, Brussels Airport is one that interests me that I'm... Um, uh, I've heard is very very good. That twenty quid there before um, there you would add on via uh, includes VAT where applicable. So I'm just wondering what that would be when you add it to cart. So that's twenty pound twenty pounds and forty two uh, pence. Let's just take a look at that and just check that out. So that would be about twenty pounds over here. So pay a little bit more and you could get an airport. Mm. I mean, essentially, you'd be looking for a very remote airfield, something like Fenland here, uh, that's uh, Burning Blue Designs uh, Airport there, £10.82 before taxes. Uh, so, yeah, you, know, you, you could get something of that ilk, and you're well, well below, about half the price of what I would call a quality aircraft. Here's a T-45 Goshawk here. 
um, that is 24.56 in uh, UK pounds before tax. So yeah, it's um, it, it's it's relatively cheap. Looking in the uh, Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator marketplace under the on sale, though, though there's some really good um, airports that would be tempting me to buy you know one larger airport or two for that kind of price i mean Cote d'azur there it's got 4.1 out of five yeah 34 comments on it but nine pound 59 reduced 26 percent i mean innsbruck here i would like to want to explore more what version that is but it's just sims version okay not take up's not been great only 18 uh people have given references but three pound 79 uh but other than that uh Brussels National nine pound fifty nine. So, uh, is it? Yeah, it's. Oof. Is it worth? How do I feel? Uh, you know, having paid fourteen quid for it. Um, my thoughts are that this is not a bargain. I'm not thinking. Oh wow, look at what I'm getting for my money. It's not a game changer. It has the potential to be a game changer. I think. It does release some of the boredom out of the loading of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I do think that this, uh, this uh, sort of, I've not yet to see this yet because I've got to find it myself, but this uh, idea that you've got this continue button rather than update as an option on, installa installa on the installation manager, I think that is good. It's still, for me though, it's, it's not a game changer. I feel a little bit, ooh, um, if, for example, this were to be a kind of project and they were going to update with some of the suggestions, if I was going to see the name of the uh, markers for the waypoints here, then I would be you know, encouraged by that. If the SIM brief integration either worked or was obvious enough that I could work it, put it that way, um, I think that would be uh, really, really helpful. It's n I, I'm not quite sold on it. I'm not quite sold on it. As for you, whether you would buy it, well, it's entirely up to you. Uh, as for me, I will be continuing to use this. Hopefully things will develop and I will go separately and look and see, um, you know, is it something that I'm doing that's not loading sim brief in? Um, but, um, and if you've got any suggestions, pop them in the comments section. I think this has great promise, but I don't think it's quite there yet. Um, but... Would I buy it again? Oof. Well, that's an interesting question. An interesting question. I buy it from the point of view of us all having a look at it together. Um, if I, if you gave me this and said, what about this compared to uh, an airport that I could add to my collection, fly in and out of and find various routes to and from for a weekend, I'd probably go for the airport, to be honest. But this has promise. This has promised. And I don't think... It's more the functionality that's getting me. Um, I, I, I don't think it's under... I don't think it's overpriced um, if it were to do some of the things that it's suggesting that it does a little bit better. Okay, well, what do you think? Never mind me. Please do like, please do subscribe. It's really important, as uh, you can see. It is important that I uh, have a way of uh, getting a little bit of income. Let's get up to those 1,000 subscribers, and that way we can offset some of the cost of testing uh, stuff out for you guys out there. Have a great time. Uh, keep safe, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.